decisions, decisions. And I'm really torn because I like both girls. Like, Anne is probably the closest to me, temperament-wise. But, I mean, I gotta admit, Izzy, those curves, those curves. Plus, um, personality-wise to Max, they're the closest. Even though it doesn't necessarily mean a thing. Opposites do attract. Um... But I do feel that Anne probably might get herself into trouble if I don't go and help her, so... Sorry, Izzy. Isabella may have invited her, but I little, but I went along with it. Plus, it's nice to feel like the wise teacher every once in a while. You're never gonna get anywhere if you don't get yourself in there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you, but you gotta be assertive with these things. Come on. I grab Anne around the waist and start pushing my way forward. Once we hit the keg, I let her go. It must be too hot in here for her, because her cheeks are kind of red. Well, you just grabbed her by the waist, and she's not a very touchy-feely girl. Or, you know, she, she's just embarrassed that you, you know, you're trying to be assertive with her. Both. I think it's both. You hold the cups, I'll pour. This stuff is swill, but it's good for an icebreaker. Know what I mean? Not really. Anne sips at her beer delicately as we move away from the keg. I try to spot Isabella, but she's lost to the crowd for now. Anne starts gravitating towards the wall, so I just follow. I promise it's not poisonous, Anne. You can take a bigger drink than that. Anne looks down at her cup and then back at me, then back at her cup again. Here goes nothing. She only sp spurts one. She only spurts once as she gulps half the drink, and only coughs for a moment when she finishes. I pat her on the back and try not to laugh. That wasn't so bad. See? You know what else isn't so bad? A little dancing. Let's hit the floor. Oh no, there's no way. There's so many people out there. You can go dance. I'll be fine. No way. That won't do. How could I call myself a man and leave a pretty lady like you hiding on the wall? Come on, Anne. She doesn't say anything as she eyes the dance floor. I think she's coming around. Come on, take another hit and let's get out there. Oh, all right. She downs the rest of her drink while I take her arm and we make our way onto the dance floor. It's crowded and bustling, just the way I like it. We begin to move and shake. Seriously, you gotta loosen up. Just let music get into you. A guy with a tray of beers goes walking by, and we both grab some more. A few more drinks, and Anne is starting to get into it. A few minutes later, and we're both laughing and swinging around the dance floor. It's the first time I've seen Anne this loose. When she lets it out, Anne's actually got a pretty laugh. Aww. We're probably dancing for about an hour before Anne starts to slow down, looking a little green. You alright? You're not looking all that great. How many beers did you down? Uh, I kinda lost count. Three? Come on, let's go sit down. That sounds good. Oh, is this one of those spinning dance floors? Do they have those in college now? <laughs> yep. Definitely time to sit some songs out. I try not to laugh at her. This is little Anne's first big party, after all. Aw. We make our way out on outside for a bit of fresh air. I sit Anne down on the curb and rub her shoulders a bit while she groans. I don't feel so great, Max. Just hold it in. We'll get Isabella and get you home. You did good tonight, Anne. You really put yourself out there. Well done. Anne smiles for a moment before a look of panic comes over her face and she immediately looks the other way. Just hold it together a bit longer, or at least try to do it facing that way. Time to find Isabella. But no sooner am I thinking about diving in to go find her, I spot her down the street from where we're standing. She's got her arms around some strange huge guy. 
He's laughing and has one arm casually around her shoulders. As I slowly approach the two, the big guy leans down, kissing her harshly on the lips for a few moments before throwing his head back and laughing. Oh god, he looks like a douche. I already know I'm the best, babe. <sighs> yeah, yeah, hottie bear. Isabella? Oh, hey, uh, hot stuff. Where's Anne? You two all right? I pointed down the street at the wavering Anne. She's looking pretty bad. I think she's a bit partied out. Oh, poor thing. We should get her home. Aw, oh, don't be that way, babe. The party's still hot in there. Sorry, hottie bear, but it's my fault she's here. I should take responsibility. You got my number. Call me tomorrow, okay? Nice to meet you, ma'am. Maybe that was more sarcastic than I meant, but I hate being ignored. Oh, sorry, Max. This is Chad. Put her there, little man. You new here? I don't think I've seen you around the rallies yet. Yeah, this is my first week. I shake the... <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too, Max. He's a jerk. I shake the jerk's hand. He's got a grip like a steel vice, and he's easily a foot and a half taller than me. He's wearing a leather a letter jacket with the school mascot, the fighting barbecues on it. What the hell kind of mascot is that? We really gotta go, Chad. Call me, okay? You got it, babe. Come on, hot stuff. Let's get the sick girl home. I wave at the master Chad as Isabella and I make our way back to Anne. Anne, who's leaning over the street and groaning, but has, shockingly, not thrown up yet. We grab her together, hoisting her between us, and make our way back to Latin House. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I actually, and I'm surprised we actually, well no, not entirely. I mean, the fact that we sided with Anne naturally would have made her like us a bit more. But I was kind of worried that that whole scenario could have played out a lot differently. But in any event, now I have three roommates staring at me for some reason. Huh. And I thought I was the crazy one, being up this early on a weekend. Yet here are three more and more morning people in workout sweats doing stretches. Dominique, Sally, and even Rakesh. Though, at least Rakesh looks about as sleepy as I'm feeling. What's up, early birds? About to get some worms? Ugh, imbecile. Oh, hey. We were just about to head out. We like to go jogging together on weekends. We usually hit the gardens. They're just lovely this time of year. Do you want to come with us? It's a great workout, and the scenery is gorgeous. Don't feel the need to go out of your way. I'm sure we'll be fine without you. Dominique, be nice. You can come out if you want. Much as I'd love to do it just to piss off Dominique, my head is still pounding from last night. I think I'll let you guys take this one this time. I wouldn't want Dominique to cry, after all. <sighs> You're probably just hungover punk. Hangovers are nature's way of letting you know you've had fun. You should try it sometime. <laughs> alright, alright. Maybe next time, Max, okay? Come on, guys, let's get going. You know, it just dawned on me that the fact that I went to the party with Isabella and Anne, if I hadn't gone, I probably could have actually interacted with these guys interesting i gotta keep that in mind for few well no i'm not gonna know i'm not gonna remember um the different choices and besides i am gonna play every route so it's not a big deal but it is interesting at least now i know for future reference that if i go to the party with isabella and Anne, i have a chance in boosting my relationship with them but i have a feeling that if i had gone jogging with the three of them I could boost my relationship with these guys, so, okay. Dominique shoots me a dirty look, but heads outside with the others. After a brief discussion, they're off. Well, Dominique and Sally are off. Rakesh looks like he's contemplating crawling back into bed. After a moment, though, he starts running after them. Ooh, look at you. I'm feeling much better about being this being up this early 
having managed to grab a shower and a cup of coffee. Or three. Hmm, maybe it's about time I put some real clothes on. Then again, I would love to, I would like to see the look on Dushanik's face when he gets back. Speak of the devil, I can hear the door opening. Looks like they're back from their run. I gotta admit, Sally's got that athletic glow women get when they've been working out. It's pretty nice. Are you not even dressed yet? Hmm, I seem to have missed the bylaw in the house that states residents must have pants on at a certain hour. Then again, this is pretty comfy. Maybe I'll just hang out in this towel all day. Would you put some pants on already? Watching that prick storm up the stairs makes it all worthwhile. Sally sighs at me and walks past as well. Aw, don't be mad. She's already gone, though. Rikish is standing at the door. He doesn't look nearly as sweaty as the other two. Probably didn't keep up very well. Now he's eyeing my towel. Are you interested, my boy? Oh, never mind. <laughs> yes, that's it. We need feathers. Bright turquoise feathers. Um, what? For your towel kilt. Stay there. I will get the hot glue gun. Nope. Nah, -uh. I'm done. You win. Pants it is. No, no. It works so much easier if you're wearing the towel while I alter it. I did not know I had this much energy in the morning, but I get to my room in record time. Luckily, Rakish doesn't appear to be following. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't blame him. Who wants to have hot glue that close to their nether regions? Not to mention, I don't think the household will be happy that uh, Rakish has to face the towel with glue and feathers. Alright, so, um, decision time. So, actually, let me look at my stats real quick. So, I actually have the highest score with Anne, but I am interested in Sally and Isabella more. And Isabella and Sally have the same stats, like you have to build up the same stats, so um, I'm gonna try and build those two up, the active and the spontaneous. That's the word. I finally said it right. Hooray. Um, but yeah. Active is at 13, and I don't have any spontaneous. Interesting. So I gotta try and beat that up. So, I'll see you guys in a few seconds after I've made the decisions that I'm gonna make regarding uh, what we're gonna do for the week. I gotta figure out the best course of action. Oh, and I gotta juggle studying too. Grades are still important, so. Um, I'll see you guys in a few. Alright, so here's E2's layout. Um, basically, just about study every day of the week with the exception of Wednesday. Uh, the pub interaction increases your spontaneous. Um, I think the cafeteria does too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it does. And then the, um, the wall climbing obviously increases your active, and I think football increases active too. Yes, it does. So, um, office, what does office do? Oh, it increases um, our rationale. And, um, I mean, I could opt to study. You know what? Yeah, let me change that. I'm going to make that study. Alright, so... what it says. I mean, as we as we go through this playthrough, eventually we're going to start seeing repetitive dialogue in this box down here. Um, in which case, I'll just go ahead and skip, but you know, or I'll, I'll cut ahead. Because I'm afraid to skip too, since um, I'm worried that I might inadvertently miss some dialogue, but whatever. Um, in any event, let's start the week. It was actually a really fun class. I'm glad I went today. Okay, that was interesting. We studied. Oh, and we got a new event. That's that's neat. I think I might add some music during that um part because it was pretty quiet too. So, uh, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this class routine. After a long day's work, some food sounds great. 
Time to hit the kitchen and find out how long until I can get some grub. Ah, Sally again. The first thing I see in the kitchen is Sally staring right at me. Oh, hey, I was just checking on dinner. No problem. Want a hand to... Want a hen? <laughs> Want to lend a hand? I could use some help with the tofu. Oh, man. Veggie night again. I suppose I could help out, though. I don't know anything about cooking this stuff. The last time she was left alone with our food, it came out less than ideal. Let me put my stuff away and go wash up. I'll come down if I can, if I can okay? Sounds good. Otherwise, I'll see you at dinner. Okay, so yeah, if I skip this, I'll save some energy, but then I'll miss a potential scene to bond with Sally. And I am kind of interested to see how her storyline plays out. Plus, I haven't really lost that much energy. It's only Monday in the week, so go for it. Once I've got my hands washed, it's back down to the kitchen to give Sally a hand. Maybe together we can make this week's meal better than last week's. Welcome back, Max. Grab a spoon and stir the pasta, okay? You're the boss. Though, is this the same stuff as last week? Because that stuff was terrible. Oh no, I switched my brands. I even made myself some over the weekend just to be sure. This stuff is much better than last, than that last tofu. Plus, I'm not trying to pretend it's hamburger this time. I figure we'll get back to basics this week. This time, fried tofu and portobello fettuccine alfredo. You know, I haven't eaten yet, so this actually sounds freaking delicious right now. And I've never actually had tofu. If anybody in the comments could tell me, you know, how is it? Like, what can you compare it to, taste-wise? I'm interested. I can see Sally mixing some kind of creamy sauce in a small pan. A pot is boiling on another part of the large stove. I grab a spoon and start to stir the pot of pasta. Let me know when that tofu starts turning brown so I can flip it, okay? This is a pretty amazing spread for all vegetables. Do you mind me asking, why did you decide to go vegan anyway? It was an easy decision, really. How so? Well, I love animals. All animals. How does it make sense to eat something you love? I mean, I started looking into being a vegan because I didn't want to hurt any more animals. But when I looked into the health benefits, it t became totally obvious. Really? Oh yeah. Reduced chance of heart disease, less chance for diabetes. It's a very healthy diet all around. I guess I've been misinformed. I've heard, maybe I'm thinking of vegetarians. I've heard talk that because you're lacking, not lacking, that because when you're vegan, you're going to lack certain um, vitamins and stuff because you're not eating meat and eating meat provides certain, you know, nutrients and stuff. But I guess that's not true. Or maybe you can supplement it in other ways. Hmm, I got to look into that. <laughs> I do love my meat and I, I feel max like I love chicken I love beef, I love shrimp but um she does look good I gotta admit, she does look good well I can certainly see the benefits are paying off Aw, thanks. Not that I was fishing for compliments. It's really a good diet. Oh, I'm sure it is. After all, you show it off very nicely. Oh, stop. Oh, yeah, that scored some points. Her cheeks are a little redder as she flips the frying tofu. I guess you're not so bad yourself. For a meat eater. Aw. Hey now, I do plenty of bacon ups every morning to get these abs. Now surprisingly, I'm not that big of a fan on bacon. Not as much as I used to be when I was younger. Every once in a blue moon, I'll, I'll want a bacon cheeseburger, but I don't really care for the stuff that much anymore. <laughs> oh 
Oh, gross. I didn't eat. I don't even know what that is. Well, I suppose it's a lot like a carrot on a stick. Hey, maybe I'll switch to carrots. That's definitely a better idea. Even if it's still weird. We're both laughing as we drain the fettuccine and pour it into the pan with the white sauce. God, that sounds good right now. I gotta see, maybe I have some pasta in the fridge I can, I can make. Okay, you keep stirring the pasta. Make sure the mushrooms don't burn. Okay, mushrooms, I absolutely hate. Like, I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste. Okay. Thanks for helping me out in here tonight. I know this is a little, this is a different type of meal for you. Totally forgot the Sally boys there for a second, sorry. Oh, it's no problem. It's just nice to see someone who doesn't automatically see something different and think it's bad. Hey, I like to try different things. Variety is the spice of life, right? That's a good attitude to have, I think. Look to the positive and try to avoid the negative. I'm used to people making fun of me for being a vegan. But it's about making a stand and showing the path to enlightenment. Um, I can respect the taking the stand thing. I don't know about the enlightenment thing, you know? But, you know, I, I respect you. I respect that. I guess I can understand that. We're all pretty different here. And we're different in different ways. Isabella and Rikisha are... Well, even, even look at you and Anne. Different. But we have we have things in common, you know? But we need to embrace that diversity. It's the path to truly capturing that harmonic energy that brings people together in understanding. I don't know if I buy into this whole energy thing of hers. But I can appreciate the sentiment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, I'm all about embracing. Diversity and otherwise. Exactly. Okay, I think we're ready. Let me get the plates out to the table. Can you turn off the stove and tidy up a bit while I serve? Will do. I wonder what she meant about Rakesh and Isabella. Oh well, it doesn't matter for now. I clean up a bit as I hear the others grabbing plates and sitting at the table. A few moments later, and I can hear Sally asking them if they like it. Utter silence. Uh-oh. Hey, come on out and grab a plate. They all really like it. Great job, Max. Heading out, I join the others to enjoy a great meal with my roommates. Aw. So that's what my tuition is being used for. I guess I'm impressed, but I wish there were more streamers. <sighs> Alright, I think I'm ready to start my ship. For some reason, the cafeteria is always weirdly intense. Oh, thank you, Max. You really definitely got my order exactly right. I feel so much better after that. Not a bad day's work. Someone that, somebody complimented my efforts. Raid stats rising. Power up. So cheesy. Learning, learning, learning. That was interesting. Ah, new event time. It's still a little weird, wandering around this place like it's my own home. I've only been here a few weeks. Well, two weeks to be exact. Not really a few weeks, but whatever. I'm not used to the noises yet. For instance, I can hear a bunch of the others downstairs. I wonder what's going on here. Looks like Anne, Rakesh, and Sally have set up in the common room. They're also... Oh, boy. There are also about four six-packs stacked on the table. Um, hey guys. Oh great, hey Max. We were just about to start playing King's Cup. Come join us. King's Cup? It is a card game with drinking that Isabella showed us. Or maybe a drinking game with cards is a better term. You know the rules forbid alcohol in here, right? Paging Dr. Buzzkill. You're needed for an immediate funectomy. Oh, shut up, Max, before I dissect you. Oh, Dominique, you should join in, too. 
Does nobody listen to me around here? Apparently not. If Sally's even getting in the, in the fun. I do my best not to. <laughs> Did I not just tell you to shut up? We listen. We just think you are silly. Come on, Dominique. Listen up. Besides, if we can't do it here, then we're just going to be forced to find somewhere else to do it. We'll be out on campus, drunk and wild, talking about how our cruel RA threw us out of her own house. It might not look very good. Oh, fine. Do whatever you like. Just don't come crying to me when the housing authority kicks you all out. I can hear Dominique's door slamming from down here. Come back and join us, Dominique. <laughs> that was fantastic. Where's Isabella to see him get put in his place? I know, right? You'd think that since this was Isabella's idea, she'd had stuck around. But apparently her latest crush called and she had to go running. Crush? Oh, sorry. I mean boyfriend. Sally's holding up air quotes around boyfriend. I guess they haven't been together long. We'll see how long this one lasts. Well, damn. So what does all this mean? Does Isabella have a boyfriend? I can't believe it. Oh, uh, so who's this crush? Oh, man. Oh, I don't know. Some giant football guy. Chap? Chaz? Chad? Chet? Something like that. Oh, great. Some huge muscle-bound oaf. Okay, so it's just us then? Yes, just we three. Four, if you would join us. Eh, it's not like I've never played a drinking game before. They usually end up being pretty hilarious. Hang on, let me grab some stuff from my room, okay? If I'm not down in a minute, just get started without me. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll play the event. Why not? I only really wanted to grab some of my vodka stash to make things interesting. When I get back down to the others, though, I'm surprised to see Dominique sitting there, looking put out. Wait, did somebody finally kill Dominique? Is this his evil but vastly more fun twin? See, Sally, I shouldn't even be down here. Stay put, you grump. You've earned a little ribbing, I think. Giggity. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um... Just, I'm <laughs> so sorry, guys. Uh, just go with the flow already. I try my best not to snicker while Dushini grumbles. Hey, I bought a little something for the wild card rounds. Oh, have you played this game before? I think I played it by another name. Really, I just wanted to get better views. Okay, well, as you can see, Rakesh set up everything quite nicely for us. She gestures at the table where the game is set up. A large plastic cup sits in the middle of the table. Around it, in a circle, are a bunch of cards. Oh yeah, I think it was called Circle of Death last time I played. It was a while ago, though. The rules are simple. We take turns pulling a card from the circle. Each card has a special task or meaning assigned to it. When it is drawn, we perform the task. The card's meaning are as follows. A two means that you may make someone at the table other than yourself to drink. No offense, Rakesh, but I came down here to play, not to listen to a King's Cup seminar. Just tell us the rules as we pull the card. Yeah, let's get to it. Everyone cheers, even if Dominique, I'm sorry, even if Anne and Dominique are less enthusiastic than the rest of us. Who goes first? I think someone has now volunteered. Really? Oh, jeez. Um, okay. Anne hesitantly reaches over to the table while the rest of us crack open our beers. No dawdling now, come on. Oh, alright. A ten. Okay, quick. Think of a category. Then we all have to say something that fits in that category. First one to miss has to drink. 
Okay, um, liquors. Beer. Boo, you took the easiest one. Vodka. Wine. Rum. Uh, scotch? Uh, n no, that's... Everyone yells drink at the same time. Dominique makes some frustrated noises, but he knows when he's been busted. He takes a big hit off his beer. I'm next in, okay? Ace. The waterfall card. Everyone begins to drink. You can stop when the person to your left stops, and not before. And what's this? Whittle Dominique gets to my right? Well, I'm certainly not gonna stop. I'm certainly not stopping quickly on his account. The others are just casualties of this war. I don't stop until I've drained my first can. Luckily, I drink faster than the others. Jesus, Max, I thought you never stop. Can't stand the heat? Get out of the kitchen. Next up, Jack. Uh-oh. Make a rule. Everyone has to follow that rule. Every Jack adds another rule. <laughs> okay. Every time I touch my ear, everyone has to drink. Just to show off my new power, I touch my ear. Everyone takes a drink as they should. Then I touch my ear two more times. I think Max enjoys his power a bit too much. Next will be a six. Ladies. And six is for girls. Bottoms up. Everyone cheers as they both take long pulls from their can. I make sure they don't feel lonely by touching my ear after they're done. <laughs> of course, that means double drinks for the ladies, but I don't hear anyone complaining. My turn. Okay, so with this card, as soon as I show the four, everyone has to touch the floor. Last one to do it has to drink. Ready? <laughs> as soon as she flips the card, five hands slap down to the floor, Rakesh being the slowest. I was distracted. No excuses now. Oh, look at Anne getting into the spirit of things. I have to admit, this is the part in these sort of games where I tend to zone out on the cards. We make our we made our way around the table three more times or so. I've broken out the vodka about two turns ago. I missed plenty of ear grabs. Sally had gotten a jack as well and decreed that everyone must say thank you for this bounty every time a card is drawn. Last person to say it had to drink. Between my ear and the game, people were starting to get pretty trashed by the time we were three kings in. And the game doesn't end until the last king is pulled. <laughs> oh, look at his face. Den, never have I ever painted a live macro. It would be quite fun to... Um, I don't... I don't think anyone's done that, Rakesh. Ah, yes. Never have I ever held hands with a girl. <laughs> Dominique and I put our fingers down, signifying that we've done that. Each of us taking a drink. Never have I ever jumped off a stage. Come on now, you're just picking on me. Anne can get a bit can get a mischievous little sparkle when she's mean, but I take my drink. <laughs> Never have I ever skipped a class to go to band practice. Seriously, screw you guys. <laughs> Max is the most drunkish. <laughs> You are plastered, Sally. I have my revenge by pulling on my ear three times in a row. As Sally pulls her card, Rakesh is the last to say thank you and takes his drink. Ha! The Queen. This is the most special card in Latin hash rules. As the Queen, I get to ask you all questions. <laughs> if you don't answer, you get a penalty. We all groan at the thought of answering Sally's question. Hmm, who to pick? 
Somehow, I know she's going to pick me. Probably revenge for that last binge I set her on. Max, question. Yes, my queen? Wow. How many times have you thought about the people at this table naked? Oh, four. Sally busts out laughing, and even Rakesh is tittering. Anne just blushes, hiding her face in her hands, and Dominique develops a sudden and very intense coughing fit. Ultimately, I think the answer would probably give me more trouble than the penalty. Ugh, you're a jerk, Sally. What's my penalty? Whoa, ho, ho. You, f you refuse to answer your queen. <laughs> then for your punishment, you must kiss. She's drawing this out just to mess with me. I look at the two girls, wondering who it's going to be. Rakish. Close your mouth, Maxi Poo. You'll let the flies in. Besides, you're supposed to pucker for the kiss. I punch Dominique in the arm for good measure, but he just laughs. I look at Rakish, but he's just giggling. Once he sees me looking, he opens his arms wide and puckers his lips. Are you serious, Sally? That's what you want to see? I look over to Anne, but she's busy pushing up her glasses and staring at Rakesh and I intently. 